The person who's grieving is asking the question, how do I get through today? And the answer to that question, wonderful though heaven is, isn't heaven, that's not today. So you see why it's very important to realize that when it comes to hope, the Scripture gives to us not only the hope of God's ultimate purpose, but it gives to us a nearer and more immediate hope. How am I going to get through today? Which is the question that the people are asking while they're trying to rebuild their life in the ruins and in the rubble of the destruction that they have experienced. See, look again with me at just where these people are, what they're dealing with. Verse 17, my soul is bereft of peace. Verse 18, I have forgotten what happiness is. Verse 18, my endurance has perished. Oh, a grieving person knows this. I'm just so tired all the time. I don't have any energy. Everything seems like an enormous effort to me. I'm not interested in doing anything anymore. And then he says, my hope from the Lord has perished. I, I, I don't even feel the presence of God with me. I don't feel that I can pray. We're going to look more at that next week. The hope that I once had, the comfort that I once found in God seems to have deserted me altogether. My my soul, verse 20, continually remembers my affliction. All that happens in my mind goes round and round and round. What I've lost, what I've suffered, the trauma, it goes on. I can't stop it in my mind. Anyone who has experienced trauma or suffered violent attack knows what that is like. Your memory replays the horror again and again and again. You can't get it out of your mind. It's there when you're in the car. It's then where you're in the shower. It's there where um, uh, you're in your bed. My soul, verse 20, remembers it continually. Christopher Wright gives the sense of verse 20, uh, translating and expanding the sense of the original words with this, I vividly, frequently, painfully, wretchedly, continually remember until my soul sinks down into misery and depression. That's where these people were. And wonderful though the hope of heaven is, at, at, at that point, It's very significant that the word that God brings to them in this depth is not to say, hey, there'll be heaven one day. That's the ultimate hope. But here we're dealing with the need of an immediate hope. And so do you see how very significant it is that when we come to verse 21, we we have these words, now this I call to mind and therefore I have hope. Now, this is the same person that said all of these things about the trauma, but, but now this grieving person says uh, there's an intentional and determined decision that I keep making that as often as my mind is taken back and back and back to the horrors, I call to mind something else. When I've lost peace, when I've forgotten what happiness is, this, there's something that I have found that I can do, and this is what is helping me. And you say, well, now, what in the world is this? What in the world is this, then, that a person could call to mind when they've lost peace, forgotten what happiness is, their hope has perished, their endurance is gone, And here it is. This I call to mind. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your
one of the members of our grief group that I've referred to in each of these messages said that in the early days of her grief, after her son was killed in a terrible accident, she felt as if she was in a pit and that she was sinking. And she was faced with a question, how in the world do I get out of this? She could feel herself going down. And she said, I learned to thank God for the smallest things. I thanked God that the sky was blue, that the sun was shining, and if I heard a bird sing, I would say, thank you, Lord. And every time I thanked God for something, I felt as if I were taking a tiny step out of the pit. Do you see how significant this is? The, the focus of hope for the person in the depth of sorrow, trying to put a life together in the rubble and in the ruins, is not in God's ultimate purpose, which will be wonderfully realized on another and far better day. The focus of that hope is in God's immediate presence. God's mercies for you, brother and sister, are new every morning and will be sufficient for each and every day. Your Redeemer is faithful and He is true. He is with you. He is for you. And He has said, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you.